going to cover some basics about scaling your tune using HP tuners today. There are a few different reasons that you might want to do this. One being uh, exceeding the injector size limit. Another being if you don't want to go speed density but you want to keep your mass airflow sensor and you've exceeded the hard coded limits of the sensor. Uh, another would be exceeding the timing table. Okay, we're going to start right off with the injector flow rate and scaling that. So, one thing to keep in mind is if you're exceeding the limits of your timing table or the injector size or the mass airflow, you're probably boosted, possibly E85. And if you're boosted in an E85 fuel system, you're probably also using a return system with a boost reference regulator. So, to start with, we're going to go into engine general fuel and we're going to find the flow rate versus KPA now the reason I mentioned uh, boost reference regulator is you're going to have all the same numbers at across the board in this table and letting the regulator control fuel pressure based upon vacuum or boost level so we're going to highlight the whole thing and we're just going to scale this by 50 percent so 0.5 Multiply, bam. So in this example, I had 104 uh, pounds per hour injectors. Cut in half is 52. It's pretty easy. So that's our starting point. From there, if the only thing you really want to do is scale your injectors because the injectors you're using have a flow rate higher than the limits of the ECU you're using then you can go from after taking the flow rate times 0.5 you can go over to your Stoich AFR and you're going to multiply this times 2 so you're just going to enter your 2 multiply so you halved your flow rate and doubled your Stoich that is how you scale the injector flow rate if that's the only thing you want to do Now if you want to scale the rest of your tune to either keep a mass airflow sensor or so you don't exceed the limits of your timing table, it gets a lot more complicated. We start involving every single thing in the tune involving flow rate, cylinder size, volumetric efficiency, anything with airflow. So I'm going to go ahead and cover some of the major things. and. Really, there'll still be some, uh, some idle tuning and things to fine tune after doing this, but if your tune was good and you scale it, it should be fairly close when you're done and just take some fine tuning. So the next thing we want to do is scale our cylinder volume. And this is in liters per cylinder. So basically what we're doing is we're going to trick the computer into thinking the engine's half as big as it is with half as much fuel flow with half as much air flow so that we can run a high horsepower setup without exceeding the limits of the timing table or the mass air flow or the injector flow rate tables so before we do that we want to go into the air flow and look at the primary VE table we're going to copy this and then go back to the cylinder volume open up our calculator and enter our current number for cylinder volume in liters and multiply it times 0.5 then take that number and copy it into our cylinder volume table Then we need to go back to our VE table and verify that it's still good. Now sometimes it'll mess that table up when you switch the cylinder volume. That's why I copied it. This time it didn't, so we're good to go. Otherwise we need to paste in our original numbers. So from there, we're going to go ahead and take that whole table 
times 0.5 as well. Then we're going to move on to our cranking VE table and multiply it times 0.5 as well. From there you're going to need to continue to go through everything involving airflow like we'll look at our bias between our IAT and ECT in pounds per hour we go ahead and multiply that times 0.5 and just keep going through everything involving airflow and cut it in half or multiply times 0.5 your mass airflow 0.5 multiply bam you just keep going through all that kind of stuff and those are all pretty easy just multiply times 0.5 and just make sure you hit them all a few of the things like the idle stuff you're probably going to want to fine tune after you do everything else and kind of see what it wants because it may be a little different but everything else involving airflow is times 0.5 now when you get into the timing it's a little bit more tricky because of the axis and the rows and columns here so what you're going to need to do is be real careful and take for example uh, 0.60 on the uh, cylinder air mass and you're going to want to copy that and bring it into your 0.3 so we're going to go with 0.32 and we're going to go ahead and copy that into there and paste it in and just continue to go for example we'll go over to the one and we'll copy it into the point five well we got point five two we're going to go ahead and put it in there and just continue to go through all that being real careful like you see I messed up there and didn't get it the whole row co uh, copied so I'll go ahead and redo that paste it in and I'm just going to keep doing that until I get every row and then the ones that I don't fill in I'm going to go ahead and uh, smooth it and just kind of proofread that knowing where I'm going to be and make sure that everything's safe and close to where it needs to be and then of course carefully logging and dialing all your tune from there after you've scaled it everything's going to need some tweaking a little bit but just being real careful that everything you do you know 1.2 here in this last row we'll go ahead and copy it 1.2 we're going to go up to 0.6 And we're just going to keep copying and pasting as much as we can and then smooth and proofread and make sure that timing table is safe. We're going to do this in both the low and high octane. Any of your other spark adders, whether it be for IET or ECT or anything else, you're going to go ahead and just kind of double check that and, and scale that stuff just to make sure everything's safe. And then something else I'll touch on, transmission. Don't forget about your transmission. All your uh, torque settings for the pressure, you're going to want to go through and scale all that stuff. Anything to make sure you don't have too much pressure at a low torque or you know, vice versa. So really, without covering every single thing, just the simple basics of it is anything involving airflow or flow rate you're going to scale and just don't forget about your transmission and really proofread those timing tables